morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. There's Bugsy Malone up in front. We are both getting wet. So we're going to keep this as quick as possible. How are you? We hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things that you love with the people that you love doing them with. Please do me a favor, guys. If you don't mind, smash the like button for me on the video like you always do. Hit the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Join the now 11,400 Tottenham fans that have gone before you. Welcome back to those. Welcome to the new. And drop a like. No, drop a comment. And hit the notification bell. They're the last two things I have to ask for. Guys, let's get on with your transfer news, views and clues of the day. It's pretty simple. One story and it's quite an interesting one. And it's getting spread around the aggregators like wildfire this morning. And that is the name Mark Kukurea to Tottenham Hotspur. Mm, interesting, interesting. I'm a massive fan of the player. Massive fan of the player. He was a wonderful talent at Brighton. Last year, he was one of the first movements in the Todd Bowley splashing of the cash, the cash splashing exercise of the 22-23 transfer window summer. He ended up moving for a record fee for a fullback. I think it was 68 million pound to West London. But it didn't work out for him. Everything was seemingly on the cards. The player's brilliant. If you might remember him from Tottenham relationships of Christian Romero pulling on that long curly hair of his. So maybe, just maybe, there might be a little bit of uh, <laughs> something simmering under the surface if he was to come in. But I'm sure that would be figured out pretty quickly. But anyway, let's get back to the story. He leaves Brighton, goes to Chelsea, high expectations, very high price tag. Sometimes that stuff obviously adds a lot of pressure to you. He's not young though, he's about 20, I think he's about 25 now, maybe just turning 26. Could be wrong. But I think he was about 24 slash 25 when he went to Chelsea from Brighton. It didn't work out and it didn't really work out well, there wasn't really a clear reason, at least on the pitch. He didn't really have any, that many injuries. I think he did miss about eight games last year through injuries. I think he had a muscle problem. But that certainly wasn't the tail of the tape. He even had his old manager follow him to Chelsea a month after he arrived. So it's not even really about playing under a new manager that didn't work out. Obviously, there was lots and lots of changes at Chelsea last season. And Chelsea, as the team, struggled. So... You know, there's just obviously those sorts of connotations that you need to bake in when evaluating what happened. Also, Graham Potter did say, I recall, maybe back in January or December, ahead of like a Liverpool clash with Chelsea when he was still around, he said um, that Mark Kukurea has had family issues. Something didn't go into the specifics of it, but personal problems off the pitch that might explain why he hasn't settled in yet. In any event, he is on the list of the long list of players that Chelsea still want to clear out, clear off the squad. Obviously, they're going through a fire sale at the moment. And thanks to the emergence of Saudi Arabia as a new avenue to raise revenues, they've done quite well restructuring their, their squad so far. But Kukurea is still on the blocks to be chopped. How much would Chelsea want remains to be seen. They paid 68 million. He's nothing like a 68, 70 million pound player. That was Todd Bowley just being a little bit wild. But I think maybe there's a 40 million pound player, 35 million pound player in there, something like that. And the rumors this morning are that Tottenham are very much interested in him. And listen, we spoke yesterday and a couple of days ago now doing the walks about the need for me to go and get a Mickey van der Ven and a Tapsoba because if you go and get both of those two then with Ben Davies hanging around and you doji you've got enough left back options and then you can have easier decision making processes around what to do with Ryan Sessegnon and what to do with Serge Reguilon both of whom I don't particularly want to see around the squad. Maybe there's an argument for Serge Regulon, And for what it's worth, a lot of the training clips do seem to show a lively Serge Regulon who seems to be quite happy and quite jovial around the, the club. So 
we will see what happens there. But the idea of bringing in Mark Kukurea, I mean, with that in mind, you have to kind of think about the real logic behind it. Is there truth to it? Look, no, none of the main, the bigger journalists, the bigger broadsheet newspapers, or any of the, you know, Fabrizio Romanos are talking about this yet. So we're gonna keep it to a short story and I'm gonna give it, I don't think there's too much to it. Personally, I don't know if Chelsea will ever deal with Tottenham. Maybe they, it's a clean slate with Todd Bowley. Maybe he's desperate. Kukurea doesn't want to leave London. Apparently he's settled in London now. So the Spaniard might favor just moving you know, up north rather than staying in West London, which would be easier. But where does he fit in the squad? Well, look, he's an absolute improvement at the left back spot. He is a traditional fullback. So he's got the balance of being able to get forward and join in. He's very creative with the dribbles. He's technically a very good player. He's a good passer. He has good vision. He can also get back and defend. He can get back and participate in the defensive efforts when asked of him. He's a balanced player, which I think is very important because when you look around our squad right now, we don't really have balance in the, in the wide areas. You have Emerson Royale, who can't go forward, but is good at the back. You have Pedro Porro, who can't go back, but can get forward. With Destiny Udoji, I don't really think any of us are particularly clear whether or not he will adapt and be moulded back into a, an out-and-out left-back situation. Or maybe, just maybe, he might even be asked to play in that kind of more advanced role and compete with Sonny and Manuel Solomon. I would imagine it's the former. But there are question marks over his ability to defend. And obviously, we don't know how much experience he has playing in the back four. Ben Davies can't go forward particularly well. I mean, he's a good utility player. He's, he's never going to really embarrass you or let you down, but he's never going to kind of change the game in the way that you would hope that he would. And obviously, we haven't signed Mickey van der Ven yet. We haven't signed taps over yet. So there's still going to be obviously question marks over which one of those two, if either, comes in. And if they do, you know, are they capable of playing in the left back spot? We know Mickey van der Ven probably can, but is that how, is that how Postacoglu would want to deploy him? It's an interesting one. As I say, if Tottenham could, and I think it would be plausible to be able to sell Ryan Sessignon and Serge Regulon, I think you could raise 30 million pounds, 35 million pounds for those two players. And I don't think that they'll be short of suitors. I think an English club will take Ryan Sessignon. And I think there'll be plenty of Spanish clubs that might look at getting Serge Regulon in. I, I'm okay with Serge Regulon hanging around, just to, just to be entirely clear. And I don't particularly think this story has legs. But it is a very interesting one because I do think he is the most balanced left back out there. And if you could get him at a decent price, if Todd Bowley was willing to wear the loss on this one, then I think he would bring incredible versatility and balance to the left side of our, of our team. It's not a priority for me. I will always cap, like, make sure I'm categorically clear that I do believe that there are weaknesses in our fullback areas. I've been saying it for a long time. But I do not think that they are the priority right now. I think the priority in the last few positions we need to absolutely secure ourselves in strength in numbers in uh, over the next few weeks is two centre backs and a six. After that, if there is time, if it's not too much disruption, if there is budget, then you worry about looking into the wide areas. We're okay in the wide areas for now. We are not okay elsewhere. So whilst I think the, the story is interesting, I don't think it's a priority. I would imagine it's not probably realistic. I'm getting soaking wet, guys. Like, subscribe and comment, guys. Congratulations, by the way, I forgot to mention that, to Ollie Skip for lifting the under 21 trophy yesterday with England. What an absolute insane finish to that game. Absolutely incredible. Congratulations to them. All we need now is England to lift the trophy, or Tottenham, and uh, we as fans can be <laughs> finally, finally satisfied, finally recompensed for all of the years of hurt. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, bye-bye.